Well, here I am sitting on this hillside on a lovely June morning uh, here in southern Japan. We're uh, on the outskirts of Fukuoka City. And I came here to uh, look for a uh, Japanese native orchid, um, Galeola septrionalis, which is um, what we would have called a saprophytic orchid in the old days. Now I guess it's, uh, what the heck do they call it? I don't remember. It has a relationship with the fungus in the soil and it gets its nutrients that way. It's completely chlorophyll free. Um, anyway, it's in bloom these days. It's maybe a little bit early. Um, I came up here several years ago to see a colony and uh, that was beautiful and, and now uh, in recent years I, I haven't seen it. But you just never know with these because they'll, they'll go underground for several seasons and uh, not come up. So uh, a lot of times it's just hit and miss. So uh, here I am today uh, exploring these woods. Might be a little bit early in the season, as I said, so uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, regardless, beautiful day. The birds are out. Um, it's gorgeous. So let's let's go see what we can find. I soon come upon a common plant of these forested valleys, Rodea japonica also known as the Japanese sacred lily. This plant has long been considered good luck in both China and Japan, probably due to the broad evergreen leaves symbolizing long life and indeed even immortality. Its odd flowers cram together on a club-like spike and produce bright orange berries in the fall. A curious vining plant, Actinidia polygamma, is also found in these mountain valleys. The leaves are blotched with white, just as though someone had splattered paint on them. Even more surprising is their relationship to the well-known kiwi fruit, A. deliciosa, a native of China. The small white flowers produce oblong orange fruits in the fall. Like its relative, A. polygamma's fruits are edible, though smaller, and have medicinal qualities as well. I search the woods on and off the trail for the orchid, but have no success. Even the area I saw a large colony in years ago is without any plants, and my hope for finding any today dwindles. Quite unexpectedly, I spy another related orchid, Lechanarchus japonica. This one is also a mycoheterotroph and is in the vanilla subfamily, just like the Certosia. A close inspection of the flowers reveals their understated beauty though they are easy to miss in the dim forest floor light. Their lack of leaves and small size makes finding them that much more difficult. I'm out of time today and regretfully need to make the journey home. It seems I'll have to be content with my unexpected discovery. Though far from defeated, I will have to wait another week to find the Certosia on a different mountain. Nine days have passed and I find myself climbing a different mountain, Tachibaneyama, this time within Fukuoka's easternmost ward. Old growth broadleaf evergreen forest covers its upper reaches, and the kings of this ancient forest surely are the massive specimens of camphor tree, Cinnamomum camphora, always with an eye shot and dominating the canopy. This tree is best known for producing camphor, a crystalline substance that has been used as a spice medicine and insect repellent for centuries. Trees here commonly exceed a meter in diameter with some topping two meters in girth. Again I find myself on and off trails in search of the orchid but having little luck. All around is perfect habitat for this species but no plants reveal themselves. Along the way I enjoy the trees of this unique forest, for example the mottled bark of Litsia lancifolia, and nearby the red peeling bark of Pruna zipelliana enlivens the dark forest understory. 
For a while it looks like the search for this elusive orchid is going to end up fruitless yet again. But then I spy some high above in a dark patch of bamboo. Well, persistence pays off. I uh, finally found two specimens here, growing of course in the deepest shade possible, making uh, photographing them difficult. Um, some of the flowers are open, but it looks like they're a little bit early yet. I'll try to get a shot on one of these uh, as close as close as possible so you can see what they look like. They're really quite beautiful up close. So uh, score, we found them. Great. It's awesome to see these uh, in the wild. You can see how big they are. I mean this plant here is coming on maybe uh, 60 centimeters tall so that's almost, uh, almost well not a meter but two-thirds of a meter high. So pretty amazing. The tall flower spike has many side branches, each supporting clumps of buds that flower sequentially. Close examination shows its relationship with the genus Vanilla, since the flower buds grow in a similar manner, resembling bunches of bananas. The flowers as well are not unlike those of Vanilla species. Fruit set is high, implying they may be self-pollinating. Like Vanilla fruits, they are large-sized and elongated. Before heading home, I climbed to the summit to take in the view on this lovely day. It is comforting to know that wild orchids yet exist with humans in the midst of this vast urban landscape. <laughs>